How's it going? This is OXDF. Today I'm looking at Handcliff from Hack the Box. And uh, specifically, I'm looking at this myfirstapp.exe uh, Windows executable. We're going to have to reverse it. And uh, this video is just going to be about how showing you how I go through in Ghidra, rename, retype variables, and uh, use enums to make code that's actually pretty readable. So uh, with that, let's dive in. So what I got here is I have uh, my directory set up. I've just got my binary in it. And then I created a project and pointed my project directory uh, at this directory. So that's where these other ones come from. Uh, I have not gone further than that. So we'll go ahead and import the file uh, from home and cliff uh, my first app exe. And we don't need to, we don't need to worry about that. We can drag up here into the code browser. We're going to analyze it now. We're going to accept the defaults. Uh, I've got I think I got my font over here big enough. We can deal with it. So we'll go functions. Uh, always looking for main. So here's an underscore m. There's a main that'll look good. And uh, you know just looking at this, this again doesn't look, looks kind of like garbage. But you know what's useful is we can start to see. Um, the Windows API calls. So WSA startup, um, if you're not familiar with that, you'd Google it, you'd see it's related to starting network activity. So that's interesting. Uh, we have a mem set on a buffer here. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff being set you know, here. Uh, and then we have get address info. And with, I, I showed this in a Flare video a while ago, I think. Um, but what's cool about uh, Windows API calls especially, and you can do this with Linux ones too, but um, is they're all really well documented here, and you can figure out exactly what the types are. So um, I, I pulled these up already, but you know, if you Google get address info, uh, you're gonna get this page. Um, you might get a Linux version. You know, you can like if some of these calls, like you know, a socket, it's gonna have a Linux version too. If you type Windows API and then socket, you're gonna get you'll get this Microsoft documentation. Um, you could also do site docs.microsoft.com. Um, but anyway, so we get this thing, and right here we know. Okay, so it's it's gonna return an int called WS API. So we can come over here. We can say okay, so uh, this right here. Uh, is an int. It's already typed as an int, so that's good. Um, we can rename it. Let's see, WSS API. That's what it said. Uh, it's just WSA API. Now uh, let's rename it again. Let's get rid of that extra S. Uh, okay, and so what does it take? Well, it takes um, P PC string node name, PC string service name, an address info A type P hints and a p address info a pp results. So let's let's go ahead and retype some of this stuff. So uh, we know this, we're gonna retype variable and call this address uh, info, I have too much way to look, address info a right there. And when we do that, push enter, all of a sudden now it's going, oh, well then if that's an address info a, then these things before that were all separate variables, separate ints, really are all just part of the same uh, structure. Um, and we could, let's see, we could actually come up here and Google for this. Um, see if this is, this actually shows what is that, what is that struct? And it's a, it's four ints and then a size T and you know, this other size, you know, so that is what this is doing. So now Ghidra says, oh, well, if you told me this is an address info A, then I don't have four unique ints here. I've got one address info A with like an AI family object and an AI sock type int and a, you know, and so it just goes down and labels that stuff for you. So that's really nice. Um, we can go ahead and do this with the other piece. Um, which are, where's our socket or get address info, uh, P address info A. Let's go ahead and retype that. And it finds it for us. So we'll just do that. Um, and so cool. Uh, this is, let's see what they call it. Um, they call it PP results. So we'll go, we'll go with that. Uh, rename variable pp result. And so now you can see, okay, so on this get address info call, uh, we have zero nine 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 nine, um, and then we, are, you know, the results that come back in this pp results, you can see what's being called here. We can actually see it's the AI family, the AI sock type, blah blah blah, and so that's what's being passed into socket. Um, so we don't actually even have to do any renaming there. That actually happens for us. Um, let's what is let's go back to what is p service name. So. Uh, a pointer to a null terminated string that contains either a service name or port number represented as a string. So port 9999. And uh, the P node name, if it uh, pointer to a null terminated string contains the host. Um, so it's the host, in this case, zero is gonna be the 0000 address, which is all your local ports. So, um, so we're getting information about that. 
we then are creating a socket um, using the family sock type and protocol. And so if we go up here, we, you know, I don't think there's anything we need to set here, um, but we know the socket is going to express. So like, what is AF? Well, AF can be unspecified, INET for IPv4, uh, what is I, INET6 for IPv6. Um, and in fact, we can come up here and say, oh, well, what was this AI family set to? It was, oh, it's up here. And this is where enums are really useful. So if I right click, uh, not enums, equates. If I right click on that two and say set equates, this is like a, a list of a huge list of all of the standard uh, defined constants that are equal to two, to O2. Um, but I know my constants, let's see if I come up here, um, all these constants start with AF underscore. So if I do AF underscore, AF init is right there. And so now I can put that in there and say, oh, I'm not setting AI family to two, I'm setting it to AF init. Um, so similarly for sock type, we can come down here and the options are sock stream, TCP, sock data, datagram, you know, uh, et cetera, raw, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's come here. We could we could look that up in that there, but we can also do set equate, do sock, and there's, uh, let's see, sock stream. Looks good, Windows, let's pick the, uh, this shows the header files that define these things. And so if you're stuck choosing between two, you know, this is a Windows binary, so choosing the Windows one makes sense, but it doesn't actually matter. We're just labeling it so we can see it. Uh, and then for protocol, again, same thing. Let's see. Um, IP proto is what we're going with here. Um, so if we do IP proto, uh, and again, TCP, so cool. That works. Um, I don't think the flags actually has an enum or uh, equate, let's check, let's see. The, yeah, they don't actually go through the flags here, so I'm not gonna worry about that one for now. But we can now see that we're lab what we're labeling it as. Um, so again, we're just when it comes to like, what's the point of this? Well, we're trying to make the program understandable. Um, let's go through here and do a little bit more. So here's the underscore time function. Got this here. Um, we get returns a time t and it takes a time t. Um, this time it's passing in null, but so we know this is like now. Uh, it's using that into SRAND. That's cool. Um, so this is a let's rename this variable RAND int. Uh, and then this PP result address. So this is going to be rename variable IP address. Now it's taking random int mod 1000. So it's gonna get a random int between zero and 1000 and it's adding 9000. So um, if we look at where this is used, so I can center click on a, you know, click my mouse wheel on this and it shows me, it highlights all the local two C's. Um, it's gonna be past, oh, started server on port, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So this is gonna be, let's rename this variable to port. Um, and this is just um, H, H2, H2NS is um, going to network uh, byte order. So, so let's rename this here. Let's rename this uh, port network by order. Um, set dart of order. So set sock ops. Okay, so set sock ops. Let's go figure that one out. Did I pull out? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so it takes in a socket, which we have here. Let's see. Um, we, should, we can rename. Let's rename this. We know. This, let's call this sock. Um, and do we have a type on that? Sock. Here, oh, it's already typed as a socket, so that's good. Um, where are we using socket here? Um, so set sock ops. Um, so set what the next thing is like negative one. It looks like the so lever level, um, and it tells us right here the levels are soul socket. Um, Is an example, so SOL is what I'm looking for in these because um, they tend to start with the same. So let's come up here and again, just go ahead and do set equate. And you're not always going to find them. You know, sometimes it just won't be in the Ghidra libraries and that, that's okay. But when it's there, you can definitely mess with it. Um, and so then the next thing, these are the, when you're dealing with a soul socket, which we are, these are the different um, types. And they all start with SO. So we'll come here and we'll equate SO underscore. Uh, looks like this is a good example. So we can choose from the generic CLIB one or we could choose from the Windows one. Let's choose the Windows one. Uh, so it's using, it's setting a socket option on our socket for reuse address. Um, let's see, what are you? Don't see you get used at all. And local 18 is this four. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Um, what are the next uh, things we're dealing with here? Uh, for the op, the value, okay, so the value is, uh, 
Okay, so we're saying um, reuse NDR val. Reuse ADR val when. <laughs> so cool, we've got, we've got that set. Uh, if that doesn't work, uh, we get some errors. Otherwise, we're going to bind on the socket with the here, okay? Uh, and the bind's good. Otherwise, we're going to wait on connection. We're going to listen on socket with um, a lot of. Uh, Listening, let's see, so failed. So if it succeeds, we're going to accept. Uh, accept takes a socket. Let's see, do we have that? I don't think I pulled that one up actually. Uh, we'll Google for it though. Win API accept. And let's see, so this takes a socket, a so an, an out, a sock address out, and an, a length. So let's come in here. Let's retype this. Stock address. We'll pick the Windows one. And we'll rename this variable. What do they call it? Address. Yeah, okay. ADVR. Cool. Uh, and we'll rename this variable ADVR len. If we can type. And this is an int. So now if we go back up here, because we retyped that one, you can see. Um, Oh no, I was mistaking there. Let's see, so where's, where's this buffer? Is it used anywhere? No, okay, so we aren't using it yet, but when we do we use it? We don't actually use it anywhere. Okay, cool. Um, and then, so with the accept happens, this will be, what does is, what is accept return? It returns a socket. Uh, so we will retype this to a socket, and we will rename this uh, accept sock. And so if the accept sock is negative one, that means it failed. Otherwise we have in return, otherwise we have connection received and we create a thread. Um, and then eventually we close the socket. So this is a pretty standard um, TCP server. You start with a socket listening, you bind, you accept calls. Whenever you accept something, you're gonna start a thread and then loop around and continue waiting to accept more. Um, I guess the only thing we really have to do here is we can, let's see, uh, it looks like so there's attributes and there's a start routine here for C handler. If we check on that, um, it's interesting. It's actually not Ghidra didn't recognize this as a function. Um, but if we look over here in the this is uh, in the um, not disassembly, but uh, the de yeah the, the disassembly, um, you can see there's a return right above it, and then it starts by doing some standard like pushing onto the stack type stuff. So this this clearly is a function, even if Ghidra didn't recognize it. And I can actually right click right here and do create function, and now it is a function. And we can rename this to, uh, you know, we're going to rename this to. So, um, uh, connection handler. And we will rename this to this. So, um, I'm not going to go through the rest of this. Um, I, you know, I'll go, the blog post will show how we analyze this, exploit it, etc. But um, I just want to do another example of how we can. Um, just by renaming, retyping, and using equates in Ghidra, the code can become so much more clear. Um, in fact, we probably should go real quick back to this. So now what do we know, what have we learned about main is, well, that does WSA startup. It uh, generates this, let's rename this to, uh, what did address, what did address info call itself? I don't know, it doesn't matter. We could use any name, but um, P hints. P-I-N-T-S. So it creates this p hints object, sets all these flags, etc. Um, it calls get address info. It then creates a socket using the same protocols. Um, it gets a random time, gets a ran basically generates a random port between 9,000 and 10,000, or 9,000 and 9,999. Uh, it then listens on that socket, sets the socket address for reuse, um, binds, waits for connections, listens on a connection, assuming it's successful, it spawns off the connection to a thread for connection handler passing in the socket, uh, passing in accepted socket right here. So um, it's just once you do this, your code becomes much more readable. And in the process of doing it, you just start to understand what's going on. So anyway, hopefully that was useful. Um, and uh, yeah, again, for the full solution, go check it out. But uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. And I will talk to you next time.